Hello, Weird Mythic fam. Thanks again for tuning in to my podcast, Weird Mythic, with me, Naomi, as your host, as always. Don't be barking at me. <laughs> so, oh no, dog up on here. No, no. <laughs> so, I am recording at my brother's house. I needed to babysit, obviously, the dog, if you didn't hear her bark, and then jump up on my niece's bed. Not even at my regular little desk area. Um, <laughs> but, you know, takes a village, right? And whenever my brother needs help with the kids, I will come up and help out. Didn't know I was going to be watching this dog though. And she's very needy, but a good, sweet little dog. (laughs) But am I right? It definitely does take a village. That is not a lie there. Um, Well, it it is a great Saturday morning. It's going to be hotter than fuck out. So me and my little niece are probably going to go to a pool at some point. Once, you know, I actually feel like getting dressed, just gave her some cereal, got myself some coffee and I needed to record. So here we are. <laughs> we have a cryptid episode this week, woo woo, which it's been a minute and I kind of want to do two and I might, but I know I say that like every time I do a cryptid episode because they're just so much fun. This week, I'm talking about the Billy Whack Monster. And I'm going to start way at the beginning of this story, just so that we have some background and you kind of get an idea of why we have this monster, this cryptid, this folklore. So our story starts us at a dairy. Yep, cows making milk. And I think in this particular dairy that it was mainly cheese. This dairy is located in Santa Paula, California, which is in Ventura County, so Southern California. And in 1922, A man named August Rubel and his wife Mary purchased a 400-acre ranch. They also purchased a second ranch, and that one is like their main home ranch, but we're more concerned with the ranch that uh, they bought at first. So they bought the this ranch, the one in Santa Paula, called the Billy Whack Ranch and Dairy. And then they bought another ranch in 1924. But anyways, <laughs> Rubel grew up in New York, but was born in Switzerland. He did serve in the American field services in World War I. He was driving ambulances. He also attended Harvard, but couldn't really find a whole lot of stuff on that. And then in 1922, he purchased the Billy Whack Dairy. He spent a lot of money on this dairy, near to $1 million in the 20s, you guys. Like, I don't... I don't know how somebody gets a million dollars in the 20s, but motherfucker had it. He also just needed to reinforce a lot of the buildings on the dairy. He, because this dairy was originally built in like, I think it was like 1880 something or 1890, so late 1800s. He also needed to get new refrigeration on the dairy, not to mention all the money for his livestock and the livestock itself. One of Rubel's biggest purchases was a prized cow by the name of Prince Aggie. And I I have some articles in the show notes about this cow, guys. Like, it was a huge thing in the agriculture community. And there's multiple art- articles on how awesome and great this milk, dairy, cheese cow is. <laughs> but sadly for August Rubel, the cow died within a year of him purchasing it. And at first, I couldn't find any real articles or like legit articles that could tell me why the cow died. And it was all just kind of under mysterious circumstances. But I did find one article that stated that the cow died from a twisted intestines. Now, I don't know a whole lot about cows, but I was in 4-H, FFA. I grew up in the agriculture community, and I don't hear that a lot. We don't have a whole lot of dairies over here either. So I am, you know, pretty naive at this. But I would say that that cow was four years old when when August Rubel purchased it. And usually with twisted intestines, I think that there's there's some like, you'll know, like like the cow is sick and this was a prized cow. So I just think it's strange that the cow died in less than a year after he purchased it. I just think it's odd. And after Prince Aggie had died, August then took his head and taxidermied it and put it on the one of the walls in his other ranch, the the one that we're not concerned with. But he got Prince Aggie mounted and put on a wall. (laughs) After Prince Aggie died and he August just wasn't making a lot of money at this dairy, 
he ended up selling the Billywhack Dairy in 1928 and ended up staying at his other ranch, Rancho Cumula or Comulos, and lived there with his wife, five kids, up until whenever, right? <laughs> but unfortunately, he did have to sell the Billywhack Dairy, so he only had it operating for about, what did I say, 22, 1924. Too. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what is that? Six years? That's not very long to have a dairy. So, what the hell does any of that have to do with a cryptid, right? Well, I did mention how August Rubel was in the military, but I didn't mention that he worked for the OSS after World War I. The OSS was the Office of Strategic Service, which later helped create like the groundwork for the CIA. So it's not that the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, became the CIA, but a lot of its foundation did help create the Center for Intelligence Agencies. When the dairy was operating in the 20s, there were rumors that Rubel was still working for the OSS, and it wasn't just him at this dairy now. He didn't retire. He was still working for them and was actually conducting experiments in the underground tunnels of the dairy. Yes, there's legit underground tunnels all throughout this dairy farm. It's not a rumor. There's legit tunnels fucking everywhere. And I did see a couple of maps of the dairy and it's huge. I'll have to post a picture of how big this place is. So to think that there's underground tunnels is pretty trippy. There's also a lot of just random buildings on this ranch and the main house has like multiple levels to it so it's not just a regular two-story farmhouse i think it's like three or four stories and there happens to also be an aviary on the property so it's just this big property with hell of buildings and aviary even an orange grove at one point it's it's huge i'm sure you're more interested in the rumored experiments though in the underground tunnels am i right <laughs> So the government and August Rubel wanted to create a superhuman soldier after everything in World War I, and the Billywhack Dairy was the location for those experiments. But the dairy was then sold, so I'm guessing that the experiments did stop. And in 1943, August Rubel was in Tunisia and actually died while driving an ambulance over a landmine. I think this was for World War II. So what's going on with these experiments? <laughs> Is there an escaped monster running around the dairy? The Billywhack monster. <laughs> this monster is a product of experiments trying to create a superhuman soldier, as I mentioned before. Now, witnesses describe the Billywhack monster as being ape-like or humanoid, covered in gray or black fur, always, always having big ram horns on top of its head. Billywhack monster is always scaring local high schoolers who are either trying to like park and make out, maybe smoke some weed, or the ones that are actually going on to the dairy to look for the Billywhack monster. So here's a couple of the bigger like stories. In 1939, in the small town of Ojai, which is O-J-A-I, O-J-A-I, <laughs> or O-Y, I'm not sure, it's about 20 miles from the Billywhack Dairy. People were reported were reporting that they were seeing half man, half monkeys. The half human monkey hybrid was about the size of a 12 year old with very gangly arms and legs with black fur. There was a Mrs. Loughborough who reported that the monkey creature stole her chickens. And there's a Mrs. Richard who saw the creature eating her corn. In 1950, a nine-year-old boy was attacked by a, quote, weird animal, unquote. And this was near the Billywhack Dairy. The boy had scratches up and down his arms and all over his back. The only description was that there was a monster and it wasn't human. They didn't have any description of what exactly attacked him. They just kept saying monster. That same year, there was a few teenagers who went to the dairy and they were looking for the monster. But what they said, and it made them run, they saw a snarling, hairy man in a hole. Now, that is their quote, a snarling, hairy man in a hole. 
Once they saw that snarling man, they took off with the quickness. In 1964, a group of hikers saw a hairy monster with ram horns. This monster stalked them for like more than half of their hike until it finally just left them alone. There were also reports of a large animal-like creature going onto the hoods of cars and pounding on them. Some of the reports even said that the creature would throw 50-pound rocks and sometimes had a l- large club at times. I did find an article from the LA Times in 1964 about a group of teenagers who went looking for the Billy Whack monster, and they were like going around to all the properties around it. They got onto somebody's property, and they straight up wouldn't leave because they were hunting the monster and thought that they were near it and was going to kill it. The kids eventually did leave this person's, you know, property. But the article is great because it's this old woman who had to threaten these teenagers with a shotgun because they were like searching for a monster, the Billy Whack monster. And it's all in this LA Times article, but those kids were freaking adamant on getting that thing. So those are like the big stories that I kept coming across. As I was reading about all the multiple random buildings and how big this dairy is, I saw many comments about how they like people try to get onto the dairy, but they have either seen or have been shot at. So apparently there are snipers on top of the hills and mountains at the Billywhack Dairy, and sometimes they'll shoot you with salt pellets. The main building also where August lived, apparently there's cash stuffed in the walls along with uncashed checks, and they're all written out to August. There's also like 50 different ways to get onto the property. So it just sounds like that this is just an odd piece of property, period. So one of the commenters, here's his story. He, his sister, and his sister's boyfriend went, did somebody walk into the house? <clears throat> All right, nobody in the house? Four-year-old let the dog out. <laughs> All right. So this commenter has this story. He, his sister, and his sister's boyfriend went on to the dairy to like drink some beer and hang out. They decided to go where the old school buses were parked. Why there are multiple 1950 school buses on the property, no one would say why. But they go there to drink and have a good time. And as they're about to finish their first beer and the sun is going down and they're enjoying everything, chill, good go. And they start to hear a very loud and violent banging coming from behind the bus that they were in. So they were like sitting near the front and in the back, they heard a very loud and violent bang. The banging went on for 10 minutes. Now these kids are just sitting in there like, what the hell are we doing now? So once the banging stopped, boyfriend gets out of the bus and walks about 15 feet away. The brother and sister stay in the bus when they started to hear very heavy footsteps walking off like in the boyfriend's direction And then they would hear the footsteps coming back to the bus. So they heard it for a little bit, these footsteps going back and forth. Then the banging started all over again. And they randomly heard a very heavy growl. Once the growling stopped and the banging stopped, they took off from that bus, got into their car and just left. I'm assuming the boyfriend was at the car because they never said he came back to the bus, but they never said anything else about him. So I'm assuming the boyfriend's okay, but it sounds like, so this was like a group of locals who would probably just trespass onto the property. I know for me growing up in a small town, we trespass on the property is all the time to just party because farmers ain't going to care, right? <laughs> but heard that loud banging and then some growls. They never went back to go hang out there again. Another commenter who, thank you, included the year. So this is in 1969. And they went to go visit the dairy, went to the main home, and he said that the third story rooms had walls, but absolutely no floors. And that it was above a swimming pool, which he said just didn't make sense to him. He did see the uncashed checks on the floor, and he straight up refused to go into the tunnels because of how creepy the house itself was. He didn't go into too much detail. It was mainly him going, it's just weird here. 
Like it's just that strange, eerie feeling that you sometimes get at places. And the Billy Wick Dairy is one of those. And one of the articles, even some of the neighbors actually commented on the article. And I saw some that said that they've seen UFOs from their house above the Billy Wick Dairy. Orbs, lights, and they've even nicknamed the dairy the Scary Dairy, which, I mean, is kind of fun. <laughs> There's another commenter in 2013 that said that she was just with a few friends and they were going to go walk onto the dairy. And they were like kind of hiking. So they were taking their time, not in a huge hurry or nothing. And as they were getting a little closer to the dairy, they heard a growl. So the group stops and they're not sure where in the, like what direction did this growl come from? They weren't sure. So they just stopped, but then continued since they didn't hear anything after. And now they're getting up onto the dairy. They could see the main house. It's getting a little dark, but not too dark. And as they're getting closer, they heard another growl. But this growl made them stop, like dead in their tracks. It was very loud and aggressive. And as they stopped, another growl came. And when this growl came, it was accompanied by a light that came on in the main home. So they're like, they could see the house, hear the growl. And as soon as they hear that growl, a light came on. This made the group turn around and leave and they did not venture onto the dairy, <laughs> which I don't blame them. That's very strange. There's another local who had been up to the dairy multiple times. Uh, there was, I think this was the one where they, him and his dad had a beehive and would use the dairy for some other equipment. So he was there often, but never had any sort of paranormal experience or any experience with the Billy Whack monster. But he said he always heard what sounded like a piano. And it was only when they were on the dairy. It wasn't at other times coming up onto the dairy. It was when he was on the dairy, he could faintly hear this piano. He could never find the source of it either. So was the Billy Whack monster an experiment gone wrong? Did it escape the dairy? Or was the experiment left at the dairy after the Rubel fa family left in 1928? I mean, stuff like that has happened before in California. We do have the Napa Valley Rebobs in Northern California, which were also a military experiment to create monkey-human-robot super soldiers. So why not another one in Southern Cali? Why not? There's even talk that the Billy Whack Monster is one of August's children who he did experiments on and wanted to keep hidden away. And then that monster escaped onto the dairy, becoming the Billy Whack Monster. I also read in a lot of different articles that cryptozoologists believe that the Billy Whack Monster is a possible Bigfoot, or at least, you know, part of that family. <laughs> Not to mention, we have how many other dogmen or goat men just running around the United States why not the Billy Whack Monster? Sounds a little bit different from the others, just for the fact that it was an experiment, but it has the human goat hybrid, the big horns. It's all there. So you guys got to tell me what you think about the Billy Whack Monster. Do you think that it could be another type of Bigfoot? Could it be a goat man? Like, there's so many other things. There's even like, the Pope Lick Monster in Kentucky, which I know sounds weird, which, you know, I, I wanted to cover it before. So who knows? I, I think I'm going to actually let me just let me go ahead and talk about the Pope Lick Monster from Kentucky. Also, since this is kind of along the same things as the goat man, go and listen to episode 34, the Ozark, Ozark Howler and the Goat Man. It is a great episode for me and Serena. Episode 34 goes into all the detail of the goat man. It's a lot of fun. But how about the Pope Lick Monster? I do have some notes on the Pope Lick Monster, and it's just fun to say. <laughs> He's half man, half goat, or half man, half sheep. And in a couple articles, I even read that he has no head. So that's fun. The reason why he's called the Pope Lick, you know, uh, the Pope, what did I say? Pope Lick Monster. Oh my gosh. The Pope Lick Monster is because of the train trestle. And that's just the name of the trestle is Pope Lick Trestle. And it is outside of Louisville, about 20 minutes from downtown. So there's been multiple deaths at this train trestle. And the first one actually happened in 1909. Not a whole lot on it. It is a train track. So 
that's it. This monster, who's also just like the goat man, it is said that he can mimic voices and sometimes like like a voice that you know. So it kind of gave me a little bit of like skinwalker vibes that it can mimic a familiar voice that you know, which lures you onto the train trestle and 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 then you die. Sometimes it's also been said that he has more of like a siren song that lures people onto the trestle. Now, apparently since 1909, there's been up to 40 deaths, but countless injuries at this trestle. It always has greasy fur, sharp horns, hooves. It also, you know, has those supernatural powers with the siren song. But what is it? A lot of people think that the Pope Look monster, this goat man, was actually an escaped circus thing. Like he was in the circus. He was a sideshow and escaped. Some of them also think that he's a product of human and animal inbreeding. Or just hu- or a lot of people think that it could also be human animal breeding, which is gross. I hope it's more in, you know, a science, you know, thing. Not, uh, you know, anyways, <laughs> there's also a rumor going around that this goat man, the Pope like monster, is a reincarnation of a farmer who used to sacrifice goats while he was alive. He was asking Satan to make him immortal and made him into a goat man. Was he escaped from a carnival? I don't know, but that seems to be the most popular thing. So, like I said, there's been multiple deaths. The first one happened in 1909. And it's just, it's just one of those things. Look, we have the goat man, we have the Pope look monster and the Pope, the the goat man's in Maryland. That's not far from um, Kentucky. It's like, it's all right there. I don't know. You guys just got to tell me what you think, because I could just keep going with all the random goat men, I guess, <laughs> and dog men. We can even talk about dog men. They're freaking out there. <laughs> so again, was the Billy Whack monster an experiment gone wrong? Please let me know. Go to all of my social media. Go to Weird Mythic Podcast on Twitter. Go to Weird Mythic Podcast on Instagram, which also has my link tree to go to my website and the merch store. And also go to Weird Mythic Podcast on YouTube. I am always posting up our videos there as well. And please send me any suggestions about the show, any suggestion for some cryptids. Maybe you're from Kentucky and you've seen, you know, the goat man. Maybe you're from Southern California and you know about the Billy Whack Monster. Let me know and send me all of that over to weirdmythicpodcast at gmail.com. Again, That is weirdmythicpodcast at gmail.com. Bye.